Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the weekly recap video where I'm gonna take all of last week's videos and answer questions that you guys had. Before we get into that, I did want to announce the winners of the Gardener Supply gift card. So we did a holiday gift guide and Gardener Supply is giving away five $100 gift cards. So many of you guys commented, which was so awesome. I've got all five winners here. So the first two are from YouTube. Congratulations to Marshall Zielinski and Alexis Lawson. The next two came from Facebook and those are Sherry McElroy and Tess Terrell. And then the last one was from Instagram and that winner is Amanda Barnhart. So congratulations to all five of you. I would love to know what you guys buy with your $100 gift cards. Okay, so let's get right into the videos. The first one was growing sprouts for a Thanksgiving turkey burger and I showed you two things in that video. First off, how I grow alfalfa sprouts in my kitchen and then second off, how I make a Thanksgiving turkey burger and I utilize the sprouts in the burger. Um, anyway, I saw that several of you guys tried the recipe and really loved it, which makes me really happy. We did partner with Anilon on that video, um, so we were able to give away three roaster sets. We picked one winner uh, from Facebook, one from YouTube, one from Instagram, and let me announce those winners now. From YouTube, it was Natalie Alex Alexandra. From Facebook, it was Sharon Olson, and Instagram winner was Stacy Lynn. So congratulations to all three of you. Your roaster set should be en route to your house right now, and we're hoping that you have them in time for Thanksgiving so you can use them right away. All right, so let's get right into the questions. First one is from Aubrey Rose. Can you provide a link to the sprout growing container you're using? Yes, we'll put a link down below this video in the comment section. Jill asks, if you were to rotate the trays every day, do you think the sprouts would be evenly green? Not that it matters. So in the video I showed you, I had uh, two layers of sprouts growing, and the bottom layer in the center, they were kind of yellowish because they weren't getting enough light. Um, and it truly doesn't matter because we're using this crop so fast and they taste the same. They don't look as pretty as they would if they were all green, but you absolutely could rotate the tray every other day um, so that you know you have kind of even color. Uh, Joanne asks, how do I find you on Instagram? There's more than one Garden Answers. We're actually Garden Answer without an S. So if you search Garden Answer and then find the profile that has my picture and that's us. All right, next video was a DIY lollipop topiary for Christmas. And in that video, I showed you how I created a fresh cut green lollipop topiary for our front patio and it was so fun. I utilized stuff I already had laying around in our barn um, and that's always fun to not have to go buy a bunch of supplies. So Kaylee said, I love your tan jacket. Where is it from? Uh, that jacket is a Toad & Co brand from REI. I got it a couple years ago and I love it. Mary asks, why do your 4x4s have a pattern on them? Are they a special kind? Yes, they are pressure treated 4x4s. They always have like those little notches all the way down them. They were leftovers from our chicken run project which we use pressure treated because those are sunk down in the ground and they're exposed to moisture and soil all the time. And so they don't rot out as fast. Tamara said, where did you get your doormat? I really like it. And there were lots of comments on the doormat actually. I found that on Amazon and I just measured our door width and then kind of uh, put my filter that way on Amazon and that's the one I found. And it's really pretty, it has our monogram. Um, I'll try to find the link and put it down below. Kim asked, is there any reason you didn't use floral foam inside the baskets? And I did think about it, but I've been shifting away from using floral foam whenever I can, um, just because I can reuse the moss. I can reuse the chicken wire. Um, in this case, I can reuse the soil because those plants aren't taking anything from it. And there's a, quite a bit of controversy surrounding floral foam as there is surrounding most everything these days. Um, it's bad for the environment and it doesn't decompose, etc. I'm not super educated on it, um, but I figure, you know what, chicken wire works equally as well. Um, so I've used that in most of my floral arrangements in specialty cases where I'm doing arrangements in really shallow dishes. I've got some footed silver dishes that are super shallow. I'll use a little piece of floral foam to help hold stuff in, but I rarely use it now. Michaela asked, what was Benjamin feeding the chickens? He was feeding them mealworms. The chickens love them. Katie asks, how do you come up with all of these ideas? Do you think it's, um, do you think of it on your own or do you see something and get inspired? So there were tons of questions about how I get my ideas. And you know, a lot of them, I like that one, I just kind of thought about and I've seen spheres like it planted up with coleus and I never really knew the infrastructure of how that was done. And so I just was thinking, okay, so how can I create that kind of look, but with green? So I saw a picture and inspired me to kind of um, do my own thing. And so I'll get inspiration from magazines. I'm subscribed to Victoria Magazine and the English Garden, um, Fine Gardening, uh, what other ones? There's probably other ones I'm forgetting, but I'll see some pictures or, you know, you get on Instagram and there's inspiration all over the place. And sometimes I wanna replicate fairly closely what I've seen. And sometimes I wanna take the idea and make it my own, which is typically what I do. And some things I just think of all by myself. So I don't know, it comes from all over the place. The next video is transparent 
transplanting a hydrangea and spirea late in the season. And in that video, I just kind of explained the situation. We're getting another AC unit on the west side of our house. And there were three plants in the way. I dug up a fern, which I just moved a little bit down the way, and then a hydrangea and spirea, which I moved to the west side. And I just talked about kind of like the pros and cons of doing it and just showing you a real life situation. Like I had to do something with those plants and may as well try them somewhere else in my garden. First question was from Blackie Khan. Uh, the grass is still very patchy, what happened? So on the west side last spring, I showed you guys, I think in a vlog where I seeded some grass seed in a very patchy area under our juniper, which was near this area. And the grass came up and it was really great. And then I think the heat happened. There's so many things going on around our house. And I kind of, I kind of fell down on the job keeping that area nice. And it's a, it's a weird area too to mow because it like the contour of the land, everything gets scalped so, so shallow, excuse me, in that area that it has a hard time. But it honestly doesn't matter because we're getting rid of all the grass on that side anyway. We're gonna do something new over there. So no worries. Patty said, will the dead leaves come off the blue kazoo spirea when the new leaves come out? Most likely, I will probably be the one out there like getting all the leaves off of it because I can hardly stand to look at <laughs> to look at plants like that. They look so messy. We had a very hard, hard freeze, like randomly it went from, I don't know, what was it, Aaron? Like 40 and then it was nine degrees and it froze tons of leaves on trees and shrubs. And it like, it's a mess. It's gonna be a mess, I think, all through the fall, like this late fall, winter, and probably in spring as these plants slowly shed these leaves. Uh, Grapefruit is winning said, how in the heck does your Vanderwolf pine over the fence grow so fast? So I'm guessing that you probably got a glimpse of it through the fence. It's on the other side of our fence on the west side in the pasture area. And I think we planted that in there last spring. Not this spring, the spring before. So it's been in the ground two growing seasons. First year, it didn't really do much. This year, it really put on a lot of growth. So it must just like its spot. It gets full sun. And I think that is so important. It gets full sun um, and it's not messed with. Like it gets water consistently. Consistently, I ran an individual emitter to it. I fertilized it um, with holly tone. Uh, this spring, I gave it Biotone the first spring and it's just doing really well. I'm happy with it. My plane said, is it a bad time to cut back limelight hydrangeas? We had an early freeze and they look sad. You know, the thing with limelight hydrangeas, they're a type of paniculated hydrangea, which means they bloom on new wood. Best time to prune them is in the early, early spring when they're starting to bud up because then you can see where the strongest buds are and you can cut the plant back by about a third of its total height to the strongest buds and then you can see if there's any dead branches you need to get rid of. So if you can hang on and wait through the winter and do it early in the spring, that's the best. But it's really, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. I mean, I don't wanna tell you to go out there and do it. There's always a risk because when you make a fresh cut, you're opening up the plant to damage. Um, so if you're gonna do that, I would do cuts really high on the shrubs so that if any winter damage happens, it won't go very far down the, the branch. So that's what I would do. Uh, Barbara asks, can you use chicken wire around your roses roots? So I had a lot of sympathy for my two David Austin roses that had been completely eaten up by gophers. They both were kind of leaning over. It was the first time I had seen them um, like that. I mean, just, I, I swear the week before I looked out there and they were both looking fine. Those gophers are horrible and they're coming in from underneath the fence from the pasture area because they are building new homes kind of nearby us and it's pushing like all the wildlife into our area. So the gopher problem's getting a little bit bad. So I'm going to up my game with the Mole Max. It's a gopher repellent to keep everything out of my yard. Uh, but I guess there are wire baskets. You can plant roses and things like that that are susceptible to gopher damage um, to keep the gophers away from like the main part of the root system. And it's definitely something I could try. Um, I've never done that before. Jennifer said two part question, actually three. Firstly, could you store the plants you dug out in your cold frame? Absolutely, I could have potted them up in some containers and put them in the cold frame and wintered them over. It may have been a little bit easier on their system, but then I would have been digging them up and then I would have been transplanting them. So they're going through two different steps. Um, I just figured one step so I didn't maybe shock the plant so bad would be better. Uh, so I tried to dig up as much of the root system as possible and just plant them out in the landscape. And I've been keeping an eye on them in terms of water. So we'll make sure to keep them moist. And I think that's the biggest thing is making sure they don't dry out all the way. The next part of that question was, could you take cuttings from your roses? I'm sure I could. Um, and there was questions too about like if I could use Biotone starter fertilizer or root hormone to try to root the plants again. They were completely eaten up into like the really hard wood of the plant. And I suppose like, uh, I don't know, I, I could have tried a, a numerous amount of things, but honestly, you guys, I'll probably just pick something different to put out there. I kind of look at issues like that as an opportunity to try something different. Um, so that's probably what I'll do. 
and what the heck is a well house? So I don't really know what to call that little hut on the side of our house that I showed you. It's like where the water comes into our house um, from the well and there's a bunch of infrastructure right there. Like all of our water main shut off um, valves are in there and it's just like a menagerie right there. So I call it the well house or the pump house or whatever, the little hut with the shingled roof over it. What do you call it, Aaron? Do you even call it something? I don't even call it anything. Yeah. I call it the little dog house. You call it the dog house? Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't really have a, an exact name for us either. Next video was nine reasons why you should be growing calendula in your garden. And mainly I wanted to do that video to just bring calendula to light in case it's something that you forgot about um, growing. I know it's a super popular plant, but I showed you one that's doing especially well in the greenhouse. In fact, I showed you this one right here that's sitting right by my feet. This is a Lady Godiva yellow and it's just such an amazing plant. I wanted to show it off. Tracy asked, how close do the plants have to be to help divert the bugs? So in the video, I talked about how calendula is a trap plant and it attracts bugs like aphids, white flies, thrips. So if you have problems with any one of those type of bugs, I have problems with aphids, you can plant those really like nearby. I would plant them as close as possible to the crops that are affected. So like for me, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, those crops are typically affected by aphids for me. So if I put calendula nearby, the aphids will attack the calendula and they'll live on that plant rather than on my vegetables, which means I don't have to spray my vegetables, which I love. Um, so I would plant them probably as close as you can to the, the crops that are affected normally. Uh, N says, can you grow them from seeds? So you can grow the tradi traditional varieties of calendula from seeds and that's how they're typically grown. I know you can sometimes buy them in packs at the garden center, like four or six packs, um, but seeding out the traditional varieties is very easy to do. The variety I showed you, the La Lady Godiva yellow, and there's also one called Lady Godiva orange. Those are a nearly sterile sort of uh, calendula, which is, is good in some ways. Like you, I talked about the pros and cons of the traditional varieties versus these newer varieties. So this type here, the Lady Godivas, because they're nearly sterile, they don't spread themselves all over in your garden. Like the traditional varieties well, which sometimes you want them to spread, sometimes you don't. So it's kind of nice that you have the option. Lottie asks, what zones can these grow in? So I can't speak to all the varieties, but I know that the Lady Godiva yellow and orange are a zone seven through 11. I garden in a zone five, so definitely an annual here for me. Uh, Virginia said, how do you know which ones are the ones that spread and which ones don't? Do you look for something on the labels? Yeah, I would definitely look at the labels. It'll probably say something like, I know for the Lady Godiva uh, calendulas, it's something that's actually good because this plant doesn't want to set seed and it's not going to seed itself everywhere. All the energy that that plant would be sending into producing seed, it's actually sending into producing flowers. Um, so you get more of a robust plant that way and it's something that they'll definitely want to put on that tag so that you know like this is a really good one that won't lull out in the, the heat of the summer like the traditional varieties do. So I would do that. I would check the tag first. If you can't find any information, you can definitely Google it. Margie said, is it just my imagination or does that look like a really robust dandelion? And I did not think that. I didn't equate that until until somebody said that. I saw several comments that said, that just looks like a bunch of dandelions. The flowers definitely look dandelion-esque. The foliage, though, the leaves look way better than dandelion foliage. And this one isn't going to take over your yard, so. Elaine says, do you think deer would feed on these? Um, so again, I can't speak to all the traditional varieties. The Lady Godiva yellow and orange are resistant to deer. Ty said, how come you two didn't tell me about the other Garden Answer Highlights channel? So we do have a second channel that's Garden Answer Highlights. I don't think I've ever talked about it before, but the channel right now is coming into its own. It's getting a lot of views. It's really fun to see it succeeding. It's basically, we're taking videos from our main channel that you're watching right now, and we make shortened versions of some of the videos, some of the projects I do, because sometimes you want to watch an explanation in a longer version where I really go into detail on a project. Sometimes you just want to watch it quickly. Um, so you can get a little shot of inspiration and you can run out and do the project. And that's the whole point of the highlights channel. So you can get information a lot quicker. We also do like mashups of projects. So throughout the years, I've shown you guys a lot of different like Christmas wreaths, for example. So we can put, you know, four different Christmas wreaths I've done in the past all together in the same video. So you can kind of get a look at different styles and, and such. So anyway, we'll link that channel down below. The last video was the tour of my parents' garden center for their holiday open house. And so in that video, I just wanted to tour you guys through before the open house happened because they just had got their load of poinsettias and Christmas cactus and it was looking 
extra festive and I just wanted you guys to see. So uh, the very first question and one of the most popular questions on that video was, can I buy things from your parents' seed store? They do have a website. I didn't mention it in the video because it wasn't meant to be a promotional video to try to sell things, but andrewseed.com is their website. They've got a few Christmas things on there as well as some of their bulk seeds and a few other items. It's brand new. They're just starting it. Um, so if there's something that you saw in the video that you really want and you don't see it on the website, you can always give them a call. They run things pretty old school I mean if you can't tell from the, the tour video it's very old school there's they don't even have a POS system you guys everything's still done on uh, pen and paper uh, so anyway give them a call and just explain what it is that you want or you know you can always email them a picture and circle the item that you want and they are more than happy to try to connect you with those things but anyway I just wanted to address that we'll put the link to the website down below so you can check it out LM says did you end up taking the deep red oblong ornament home no I went back, I forgot that day to take it off the tree. I went back the next day to the open house and it was gone. <laughs> I'm so sad. So it's one that I'm hoping we can order more of. I don't know. I just thought it was so beautiful and I didn't get it. Uh, Deborah said, did you guys replace ornaments as people buy them? I imagine it'd drive you nuts if there were bare spots. So what we do, those trees are usually so full of ornaments that as people buy them, we just kind of, we call it fluffing the trees and we go and just kind of move some, some of the uh, existing ornaments around and just make it look a little bit more full or like more evenly dispersed. There are no extras. Like there there's no extra stock sitting in the back anywhere. What we have out is what we have for Christmas. So we try to make do the best we can. Teresa said, did you get new shoes? What shoes was I wearing? I think your Nikes. So I was wearing my Nike shoes, which I've had for a couple years. <laughs> I don't have any new shoes. I haven't bought any new ones yet. I'm starting to like dip into my old ones that I have in my closet. They're still okay. I'll wear them out wear them until they wear out and have holes in them. Mel says, do you run into a lot of people accidentally bumping or dropping and breaking the ornaments? No, I've never actually even thought about that. Um, those artificial trees are kind of nice because the, uh, like each branch is very bendable. So you can put the ornament on, especially the more breakable ones and you can bend that branch over so it kind of holds it in place. I don't think that, I can't recall an ornament breaking from somebody bumping into it in all the years I've been down there. We got lucky, I guess. Uh, Catherine says, so are you your mom's best customer? Aaron, why don't you speak to that? <laughs> well, they don't make a whole lot of money off of you. So no, I get, a, I get a pretty good discount, but I do buy a lot of stuff down there, a lot. In fact, she now knows when she places an order, she calls me and says, hey, I'm ordering from such and such, what do you need? Because she knows when she gets a new order in, if she hasn't asked me, I will probably clear her out of specific things that she's gotten, so. Anyway, yeah, I get a lot down there. Agonza says, beautiful, I wouldn't be able to leave without something too. Are your siblings big gardeners like you? So I have an older brother and a younger sister. My older brother, he does like to have a nice garden. Um, he does a really excellent vegetable garden. Like he grows pumpkins in particular. He's always been a pumpkin man. Um, he grew them when we were kids. We had side-by-side -side gardens. It would drive me nuts though because I liked my garden very clean and orderly and he would just grow pumpkins and let the weeds just grow like crazy in and amongst the pumpkins, um, which is, pro is fine. Um, but I always had like rows of lettuce and I would grow tulips. And then so finally I like created myself a rock border in between our gardens because I was sick of his weeds crawling into my space. Um, so yes, he likes to garden. He doesn't garden quite on the scale of my parents or uh, how Aaron and I do. And my younger sister isn't super into gardening she is the cook of the family. She loves to cook, like 24 seven cooks. The last question is from Pam. She asks, how did this charming store enter your family? Uh, and I think I've talked about it before, but I can't remember how long it's been. So I thought I would include this question. It's kind of a fun history. My dad started at Andrews when he was 15 years old and he was sweeping floors and loading bags of alfalfa and clover seed. And he did that for a lot of years. The owner at the time really took my dad under his wing, taught him a lot. They got along really well. And so my dad later on was able to kind of gradually buy into the company. Um, so my parents met after my dad started at Andrews. There was a sandwich shop down the road and my dad would go to lunch there every day. My mom was a waitress and they met there and ended up, you know, getting married. Um, they started the nursery portion in 1990 and that was really in great part due to my mom's uh, energy and enthusiasm. My parents worked on it together though to create it and make it what it is now. Um, and it's kind of interesting because now that sandwich shop that was down the road, it burned down at one point and it, they had it moved to 
the Andrew Seed property because it held, held such nostalgia and so much meaning to both of them. So the sandwich shop is called Belly Buster of all things. <laughs> and it's still called Belly Buster and it's right there, right on the property in one of Andrew Seed's buildings. So, you know, as kids were able to kind of grow up around this, we used to, you know, when the nursery was in its infancy, um, you know, they were working out how to like make everything work. And, you know, we're still closed on Sundays. And so I remember going down there a lot as a kid on Sundays in the hot part of the summer after church, we would grab pizzas and we'd go down there and we'd water plants. Um, and that's like a lot of my childhood memories was spent either in their garden working or in the, the garden center, like good memories though. Um, we did everything together as a family. And so I don't know, I, I think that background just instilled a love in me for, for it. Um, and I think, you know, we'll see what happens in the future, but you know, my brother is very involved down there now with the seed brokering part of the business. I've always had a huge interest in the garden center portion and I don't know, we'll see what happens down the road, but it's just kind of a special, it's a special place for us, so. All right guys, so that's it for this week's recap video. I hope it was helpful to hear some of those answers and we will see you in the next one. I hope you have an awesome week.